Hi everyone, I'm Loida. Welcome back to my channel. Now recently I took a trip to Australia with Brian who had the opportunity to speak at the Million Dollar Agent Summit. Now this conference featured the Altman Brothers from Million Dollar Listing in LA and also Louise Ortiz from Million Dollar Listing in New York. Now I had the chance to film a few clips from Louise Ortiz's speech and I wanted to share them with you guys. The first clip that you're going to see is him talking about the casting process and pretty much how his personality is the reason that he got selected. Somebody in the audience had asked, how can me being an average person stand out or be more likable? And you're going to hear Luis's response to that. And in the second clip, you're going to hear Luis talk about what he did when he was a brand new agent. And for all of you that are brand new agents or thinking about getting your license, I highly suggest that you pay attention to that clip and learn from his experience. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoy this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up, share with somebody else, leave me a comment in the comment section, and let's get to it. First of all, you're not a normal guy. That's you thinking you are. Everybody's unique. I say that many times. I'll tell you something, you know, when I was doing the audition process for Men and Listing, hey, I went to, uh, remember I had to go to uh, an interview in a hotel, and I did another interview with them, and at the end of the interview they said, I think you're too nice for this show. And I'm like, now I want to do it, and I wanted the show. Two weeks later, they emailed me and they said, you know, we had a character in mind that we were casting for. It was the asshole, it was the squasher, it was the bully, it was that guy who you know, will, be, will make for great television. But then when we saw your casting tapes, we realized that we saw something in you that was far beyond, more interesting than the person we had in mind. And they said to me, what? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> but I want to answer your question. <laughs> what, what, what they said is this. The reason you also became a cast on the show is because while, because, uh, while everybody else was looking behind their shoulders, trying to see how close the other people were, let's say you were in a race, you can only run as fast as you can humanly possibly can. Looking back, or looking sideways, or looking up, or looking front, it's not going to make you run faster. I mean, your body, and the amount of training it has, is going to allow you to run as fast as possible. So when we're looking behind, or we're looking to try to see how someone is close to us, we're actually getting slower. So my only objective was to try to become the best, or trying to get to that finish line as fast as I could, uh, or, or with, we're, we're the same, you know, just try to get there. So, did I ever thought if I was going to make it this, this far? I never did. I was just trying to be as present as possible. And I was trying to control the only thing I could control, which is the now. Tomorrow's not guaranteed, and the past is already old newspaper. Believe in something first. Ask yourself that, the question of whether you're happy with what you're doing or not. And then once you're really convicted of what you're doing, just push. And pretty, stop comparing yourself to all the other people's lives. I mean, we compare our lives to everybody else, especially now with Instagram. Everybody's posting beautiful things about how much they're succeeding and how much amazing they're doing in their life. Only, in, in, and then we're comparing our, 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 where we are based on how old we are and how young this person is and he's succeeding, but now I'm also old and not in the same level of that person and then we become miserable and depressed and everything in between, but not knowing that all these people that are posting amazing things about their lives are also trying to put a facade for the lack of success in their own life. So it's becoming a big mess and we're all in this shit hole that we don't even know how to get out of. <laughs> I will come to the other, to the house and tell them I just started real estate in this, or I just moved into this market. I just want to introduce myself. People actually want to make a phone call and already expect that person to give them the business. It's, you have to be patient. In fact, when I cold call, I always call just to say hi. I call the second time to say hi. I call the third one to say hi. I says, like, are you gonna to continue to say hi? Do you have a point? And now he's asking me a question. He said, yes, I do. I'm just waiting for you to like me enough so we can talk business. So I start laughing. <laughs> So, we're all humans at the end of the day, uh, but we become very mechanic. We, you know, we, we see what works for someone, and then we try to mimic that, but then by the time we're trying it, we're already too late. But we forget that an approach, you know, we, we, we have to ask ourselves, how do we approach, or would it work, how do we respond to someone that gives us the same approach? So, I understood that everybody was, this market was very saturated, and that people just had enough. So, cold calling and, and also, when I started and I had no credibility. I was not the one to tell you I can sell you the price, uh, this apartment for the highest price. I, don't, I, don't, I, you know, I can't give you the things that I don't know. But what I can give you is me having the ability to orchestrate the best people 
to give the right information to you. And how would I do that when these other people saw me as a rookie? Money. I gave them all cuts of my commission if I chose, if I was the one to take the business, just on them consulting. So when they consult on a specific price that this listing had, that I had an idea, I went back to the guy and I got seven of the best real estate agents. And I promised them half of my commission, in fact, all of it, so I don't win any money, but that I can give you a more educated answer on what you really deserve to have. And that tells you one thing I'm not going to overpromise that I am the best, but I can promise you that I'll find the right way to orchestrate the best of the best to give you the right thing. So I am the orchestrator of the orchestra. I'm the director, I'm the leader of all these people, but they were willing to be led because they, they had they had no time that they had to spend on me. They just they just get paid. Enough times I did that that eventually I already had the credibility and the money was for me.